Uh, we have a quorum, so I'll call a meeting to order. Um, uh, call a meeting to order. It's 7.05. All right. And um, we have, um, if, why don't we uh, do this? Why don't we, uh, uh, and it's, just let me know if anybody opposes. We can accept the secretary's report and then we'll um, entertain the, um, the FinCom members. Is that okay with people? That's acceptable. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so let's, uh, I need a motion to accept the secretary's report. <laughs> Excuse so me. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, who seconded that? Chris. 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 Sure. All right, thanks. All right. Um, so does anybody have any comments or questions regarding the secretary's report? Got I think we're good. Okay. All right. If uh, no questions or comments, uh, vote, uh, motion to accept the secretary's report. Um, uh, Amy? Aye. Chris? Aye. Scott? Aye. Adam? Aye. Um, Susan? Aye. And Jeff? Aye. I'll I miss an anybody? As well. I'll be an aye as well. Okay. Who was that? <laughs> oh. Wow. Okay. I apologize. Okay. Um, all right. Let's move on to um, the. Uh, uh, I'll be an I also. Uh, let's move on to um, the reason uh, the FinCom members are here whatever, with us. Whatever you get. Good evening, everybody. Tim, how you doing? Dan? Hi, Dan. So I'm uh, Dan Sherman here. I'm the chair of the subcommittee of the library um, uh, FinCom subcommittee. And Joe was, doesn't appear to be joining us, uh, but Tere is um, on. Um, and if you recall last year, um, I think Tere and I were in uh, one of these meetings a year ago about this time. So <clears throat> I talked to Catherine a little bit about the budget. Um, I shared it with um, Tere and, and Joe. And uh, our first blush is it looks, you know, it looks pretty good. But I wondered if, if you could just um, it was Catherine or one of the um, committee members who kind of, kind of hit the highlights in terms of uh, what changed. In other words, it's always, we always focus on the changes. And um, if you could just hit high points a little bit uh, for Tere and myself, and then uh, we'll, we may end up throwing a couple of questions at you. Okay. Um, if you, so if, if you go to the, um, the bottom of the, I guess it, it's my page two or three. So you see the contractual services and the materials and supplies, where that is split out in every category, um, the change is on the right. Yeah. So the first change is in um, HVAC maintenance. And in the narrative section, I have highlighted for myself, I've highlighted, you can see the difference um, from last year's appropriation and this year's request. So for HVAC, um, I doubled the number. Last year it was $4,500 for mechanical repairs for the HVAC system. And we've already spent that this year and the, um, it's an aging system. There's multiple boilers and one of them is, is, is down, which is okay. But if you lose another one, that's, 
going to be a problem. So um, due to the rising costs and the repairs we've had this year and sort of what we anticipated, um, I doubled that number. The, and so that's the, that was the increase in HVAC. And oh, then- uh, Catherine? Yes. So a quick question. Um, you said one boiler is down. Mm -hmm. um, is there a plan to repair it? Not really because we don't need it, but if a second one went down, we would have to repair it. Can I, can I interject there, Catherine? Yes, I, please. Uh, Dan, um, the, the boiler, there are multiple boilers, there's six boilers in total for the, for the um, library. Those boilers are all joined together and they act independently, but also they act together. Uh, there's more than there's more than enough redundancy uh, for the library to have no problem. The most on a very cold day, maybe three boilers would operate out of the six. Uh, one doesn't one's not available, so really out of the five. Um, and we do have on our capital plan um, some um, to anticipate replacing that boiler. Uh, that particular boiler, so we'll back up. To, we'll be back up to six, but it's not. An, uh, I just want to stress, it's not an urgent need because um, there's a lot of redundancy in the uh, system because of the size of the boilers. So, so the it's it's beyond repair, be needing a replacement. Correct. That section, that one particular section, it's not really salvageable. So um, we just do a replacement that would take up that slack. Um, but the other five boilers rotate. So they rotate and they operate at fairly equal amount of time. Um, so they, wear, they should wear out at about the same time. Um, this boiler actually has been down, I believe, for at least two winters now. Mm -hmm. Is that enough? Yep, that's good. Thank you. Go ahead, Catherine. Okay. Um, thank you, Tim. So the next one is um, building maintenance and improvements. And there's a $3,000 increase there. And the bulk of that is in um, burglar alarm and security system um, increases in um, but part of that is um, contractual and part of it is what we anticipate for um, possible repairs. We've had a number of repairs this year um, and I've doubled the amount for miscellaneous rotating repairs. And that's things like carpentry and uh, things that you're just never gonna expect. This winter we had a piece of um, wood from around the windows on the outside just sort of fell off. So it's, it's money for those kinds of repairs. And those um, prices have gone up. So um, I, doubled, I doubled that from 2000 to 4000. All right with that. Okay. Um, the next item that was increased was professional services. And the majority of this is in um, software licensing costs and um, a consult, consultants for uh, our IT services. We work with Noble for most of our IT work, but from time to time, we also consult outside of Noble and get advice and help. Um, for server things and, and we have a server installation coming up next year. So we'll probably need something there. The software licensing, um, we have some software that, that the capital, IT capital, we've been asked by town hall to put that into the budget and that's a, about $1,500. Um, in addition to that, we have a lot more software needs. Every year we seem to have more. And some of those are patron driven. Um, 
training platforms that that patrons would have access to. This year, we also had a significant um, increase because we got hotspots and we got the hotspots through grants, but we need to pay um, an annual um, cellular fee for those. I did talk just today, finally, to MBLC about whether or not those costs would help us, um, we could put in as part of our um, materials expenditure for state aid. And at this time, that does not count because it's a software cost, but they're looking into adding that in. So when we're looking at go moving forward for kind of being sustainable, um, those costs would would be would be somewhat offset because they would be a um, material cost, as opposed to this year, it's not really showing as a material cost. Um, also, if it wasn't a material cost, I would probably consider cut, cutting back on those. Um, we have quite a number of them and we're wa closely watching the, the use of them. Um, but we got them, hotspots are the, you know, you get Wi-Fi from it. Um, we got those from a, an APA grant. Um, so that's the bulk of that. Um, and then automatic network services is noble. And that's a contractual increase. Part of that is the increase in their, um, their fee that's divided among all the noble libraries. And there's also increases in databases and um, downloadable eBooks. And all of those are material expenditures. So those all count for our certification. And those were the main contractual increases. Um, then we have um, an increase of $1,300 in building maintenance supplies. Um, that's a little bit COVID related, it's filters. Um, I increased the amount for air filters. And then I did put in $1,000 for books and publications. I don't absolutely need that thousand dollars to meet certification but i do like the idea of always putting something in materials because that's a constantly um increasing line item that we um you know the, the costs of that increase every year so to get the to keep us steady we always have to put a little bit extra toward that You think, do you have questions? I think that was the bulk of the changes. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I did, one question is on postage. Um, and this obviously is a very extremely minor, but you've only spent $52 so far on postage. Yeah, um, part of that is, well, we're waiting to see what's happening with postage. Part of that is um, the pandemic. We, we didn't um, send things out to people quite the same way as we did in other years. Um, we sometimes like to use, if we have extra postage money, what we like to do is um, send, maybe like send a postcard to everybody in town, that kind of thing. Um, in, in FY20, we spent $3,500. So this year we haven't spent as much, but it really is sort of related to the pandemic. It's, un it's unusual that it's that low. Yeah, so on telephone, um, you've already expended, expended 1424, which your budget's only 1100. Is there some aberration in timing on the telephone charges? The telephone um, is through the town. And it's, so we just put $1,100 is sort of a placeholder and they just take that out. They just take it back, the $1,100 back. We went over because um, Jeff Klapes put telephone service on a personal credit card 
And we used that service during the pandemic so we could take phone calls from home. And that's not gonna happen again. That's been, we don't have that line anymore. Um, so that's the end, that we will go back to the 1100 every year. Yeah, I think you're muted. If you, it looks like you're speaking, but you're muted. <laughs> Thank you. I've got, I have guests here and I keep muting them. Um, so the 22 budget, does that include the November increase for Sunday hours? Are we comparing? Yes, yes. So, so, the, so the 22 budget is, uh, I think it was $50,000 was added? It was 60. 60, okay. Yes. Okay, so we are comparing um, apples to apples in that sense. Absolutely, that's that's the appropriation. Okay. The full Good. appropriation. All right, yeah, for this year, what we're in right now. Exactly. All right, Therese, do you have some questions? Go ahead. Yeah, actually, actually don't. Catherine, um, first of all, thank you for the explanation. Um, the only question that I initially had was about the software budget. I just was a little confused about um, what, what software services the library was providing, but you did a good job explaining that, particularly the fact that services are, um, there are some training software that, you know, patrons use. So that, that was very helpful. And I think generally, just like Dan said at the beginning, um, this budget seems to generally be prudent. Um, the the cost, um, the increased costs appear to make sense and are reasonable. So um, I find them to be fine, but and thank you for the information. Very good, thank you. So um, I have one, this is like a high level question in terms of um, personal services. Um, most of your staff is under contract and until when? We just signed a three-year contract. Yeah, but I thought it was a retro, right? How far to back of the retro? It just went to July. The retro was we we didn't we didn't make it. Um, it it was approved in November. Right. It was, it was only retro to July. Oh, okay, it's like a like a few months. Right. And that covers most everybody, right? Just a handful of people are have separate contracts, yourself included. Uh, yes, that's that's everyone. There are, there are two. I have a contract. Um, Jackie and the um, administrative assistant have a separate union contract. They're in a separate union, and everybody else is in the um, the librarians' union. Then the separate except, union. Except pages. Oh yeah, of course. And the separate union is at the same time. That was what started July one of twenty one. No, I think I think Jackie's contract started last year. Yeah, so she'll she'll be done a year earlier. Okay. All right. So so the terms of um, all the um, earnings for twenty three, they're pretty much set. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, no, I, I, I do think this is quite reasonable. Um, the library has always put together a good uh, budget and kept to it and um, is conscious of the spend. Um, I don't see any issues um, going forward. Have you heard anything from Steve or Kevin regarding uh, any questions or issues with the budget at this point? No, the only... Um... The only contact I've had was Kevin this week he gave me that trust fund income number. Oh yeah. Um, which is over sixty-one thousand dollars. That has never I've never seen. I don't know about you, Dan. Have you ever seen it that high? No. Yeah. No. And he and Kevin just came back and said, "Yes, it was a very good year." Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, that was that was that was good. That helped. Obviously, your bottom that helped the bottom line in terms of the rate of increase um, kept it down quite a bit. So yeah, that was nice. Um, no, I think you guys you guys ought to have clear sailing um, at uh, town council and, and FinCom. At least from my perspective, I don't see any issues, and you got plenty of room with the the books budget, which always was the issue with accreditation. It hasn't been for quite a while now, so um, I think we're in good shape. I, I like it. Um, Trey, you got anything else you want to add to that? You, 
You agree? Disagree? Uh, I, I agree, of course. And I, I think I'm, I'm all set. I appreciate the information today. And um, yeah, that's it. Great. Okay. Well, well, Dan and Tree, uh, you're more than welcome to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Thank you. <laughs> but we do appreciate your uh, your support and your input. And no, I, Dan, yeah, I have great, to ask. It's great working with you guys. I have to ask the question. Yeah. Are you up at Sugarloaf? Of course. <laughs> uh, you're killing me, Dan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So this, yeah, Tim. So this is my barn. You've heard yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. You can see yeah. the background. In the fireplace back there behind my shoulder. I don't know if you can see that. I get to move myself. Yeah, there it is. Anyway, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, we're supposed to get a big storm this weekend, so looking forward to some uh, extra skiing and uh, some powder. So it's good. It'll be good. Well, I'm just express my jealousy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we'll get you up here, Tim. We'll get you up here. I'd love it. To be honest here. All right. Well, thanks, uh, guys. We appreciate it. Um, yeah. And we're going to go back to our regular agenda. Okay, great. Have a great evening and a great meeting, guys. And thank you, thank for you your, gentlemen. Thank you for all your assistance and your, your volunteering for the town. Um, I know the town appreciates it. So it's great having you. Thank you. you thank well. you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good time. Okay, we're um, on to um, staff reports. Can I have a motion to accept staff reports? I'll make the motion. I, I just had one clarifying question, uh, which is really just more for my own education. So sorry for airing it publicly, but um, yeah. but I'll make the motion and, and ask the question. Um, it was around total, it was a stat around total uh, card holders year over year. Um, just curious, I saw that uh, year over year, new membership went up by I think 400, but uh, year over year, total card holders dropped by, I, I think, around a thousand. Which, again, not knowing what goes into that number, was just curious. Um, is that steep? Is that normal? So, again, uh, uh, that's not a discrepancy. I'm just curious. Um, Laura asked the same question, and hmm. I won't be able to find the written answer um, because I had to ask so someone who. The, our card holders are purged. Oh, okay. Jackie, I have most. the written answer if you want. Cool. <laughs> oh, Thank you. You? Sorry, yeah. sorry yeah. for the repeat question again. I, it, I'm here, so I figured I'd ask it. But yeah. This, um, so any card holder without a checkout who has been whose card has also been expired for three years is purged on a monthly basis. Okay. Um, so if you have items outstanding, you're not. That card's considered still active, even if you haven't used it. Um, but if you if effectively, if you don't use your card after a certain amount of time, you're just removed from the system. Makes sense. About what I figured. But Noble also did not do purges during a section of the pandemic. So, so part of the 2020 number were people who would have been purged but weren't. So the number was unusually it. high it was inflated because it was of inflated so, because you know, they, it might it might be 500 on a normal year but because of that it was a thousand and for exactly yeah okay cool oh, Just okay so <laughs> i still need the motion for the uh so i staff. make the official motion to accept the reports <laughs> i just second. wanted to ask that question i Sorry. got a second second all right chris second all right now we can uh Further discussion. Um, so, Catherine, I saw some lines about um, uh, cybersecurity training. Uh, it got me thinking about uh, some items in the news about uh, ransomware. I don't know what our exposure is. I know we house stuff at Noble and some at Town Hall, so I don't know how much of our services, how much of our data is held locally. But um, you know, what, what's our exposure there, and and uh, are we taking steps to uh, to address? counter uh, ransomware? Noble does take steps. The town has taken steps um, because they had a ransomware attack years ago. Um, I, I can't tell you exactly what those steps are, but I know that they've been taken. Um, we have, I don't know, I would have to get back to you, 
to have exact information. I've talked to Alyssa about it. Um, part of the part of the cybersecurity awareness training is to prevent those things from happening because you click something or right. like from the staff getting it. But but if there was something at another level, like people getting into um, something, it do you know what I'm saying? That sure. was, if it wasn't related to to staff action, but but came in through whatever that would be. Um, yeah. I I'm not positive how that works. I I know we especially Noble. I know Noble has some stuff set up. And she has lost sleep over it. Um, and they are moving within a year, they're going to move to the cloud, which has redundancies and um, some greater protections. Yeah, it, it, it seems like most of the folks who get hit, they're, they're vulnerable because they're out there on their own. They're, uh, they're trying to run a whole counter uh, and run their own cybersecurity out of each individual hospital, municipal building, and and whatnot. So, yeah, no, that that that's great. The more we can team up with other folks, I I, I think the better off we'll be. Um, mm -hmm. Just as long as, as one that's part of the the the, the training you guys are taking, and, and two, someone's thinking about it. That that's great. Thank you. Okay, I actually, um, Jackie, or uh, maybe Catherine, you could tell us how. Uh, how is Sunday gone? Sunday hours gone so far? I think there's been three Sundays. Mm. Am I right? One. Yeah. I is it two or three? Um, three. It is three. You know, I haven't looked at the traffic. Have you, Jackie? Noticed looked at the traffic for Sundays? Um, it's steadily increasing. The first one was really quiet. Um, I think people might just not have gotten the word. Um, that was the Friday we. Um, there was a snowstorm too, so I don't know what people had going on that weekend, but that was very, that one was fairly quiet. Um, but it's, it's steadily increasing, but not to the, the, um, it, we're not anywhere near what we used to do for traffic or circulation, yeah. but that's true every day. So, yeah, yeah, it'll get there, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anybody else? Okay. Um, I, oh, we can do this in budget time. Never mind. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Well, I will take a vote on accepting the staff reports. Um, uh, Paul? Aye. Okay. Um, Chris? Aye. Amy? Aye. Adam? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Scott? Aye. Oh, yep. Yeah. And uh, Susan? Aye. Okay, I think that's everybody. And I for, my, for myself. Okay, I think uh, we already covered public participation. Unless there's somebody out there, I don't know this there. Um, uh, correspondence. Um, Catherine, I, um, um, I saw the, uh, the youth, uh, the correspondence on the youth room. That was about it. Is there anything else? No. Um, no, that was it. Okay. All right. Um, we're on to committee reports. Um, we just did kind of did budget, but is there anything else you want to tell us, Catherine? Because the one thing I was going to ask you to explain, um, which you hit on a little bit, um, but maybe for um, for Scott and Paul about the offset um, from the trust funds. You might, do you want to just give a brief explanation of that? Yes. Um, when I sent the, the renewed budget, I had added a trust fund income offset. So what that is, is um, we, we are gonna submit a budget and we know how much we need, but there are trust funds that are managed by the town treasurer 
I had kind of walked you through this a while ago. So we have the trust funds that that you are all in charge of um, that are with First Financial Trust and there's one with Fidelity, but then the town, tre town treasurer has older trust funds that were like BB people and um, all kinds of trust funds. And he takes that interest and um, annually it, it's applied to our budget as an offset. So if, if we have, um, if we need nine, uh, $1,900,000, and there's a section, uh, there's you know, $62,000 in interest, that's gonna offset that budget that we need. So it's gonna reduce the tax levy portion. Okay. And, Just... and that, will have, that will have effects in different parts of state aid. Sometimes it, uh, it you know, we have a municipal appropriation requirement and it, that does not, it can't include the trust fund money. That's not municipal appropriation. So, so sometimes when we get a big trust fund bump, I kind of have to look at that and make sure that we st our appropriation is still enough um, to meet the criteria. Which it which it does, and this is the largest trust fund we've ever trust fund offset we've I've ever seen, and uh, we're still fine. Does it have to go to a budget offset? Um, it as far as I know, it can't go to anything else. They it um, I don't know if you know that Tim, but um, well, the, the, those are by um, by their wills and be, their bequests, aren't they? Correct. What I can okay, tell you, is, well, the tr it's a good question. The trust funds that are managed by the town, they have always um, taken the interest or the income from those trusts and applied it to our operating, essentially our operating budget. So it, it, that amount of money, they could choose, the town could choose not to do it if they wanted to fund say the $61,000 we're talking about right now, if the town wanted to fund it, they could let the trust grow more. They could let the income grow. But they, the only thing, the, the money from those trust funds can be used is for the library. So, so you know, if just, the town was flush, you know, I suppose they didn't have, wouldn't have to use the offset, but they never do. They always take it. And it's only income, keep in mind, it's, it's not a principle of the trust fund. It's just income. Uh, I think the question was, can we use it for something other than yeah, so if, a yeah. budget buy down, basically? Yeah, we don't have like control over it. That's why the town does. We don't control it as a board. Oh, so are you, are you saying would the town ever give us that, that income in addition to the yeah, uh, yeah. so like if because if you had that like if it was a budget offset then you get the budget offset but i was just thinking like there's other things that have come up or things that you know if, the, yeah, like, if there was that like could you use that as you know carpet <laughs> a new boiler <laughs> uh, actually it's a good question but it's a good point they don't necessarily have to use the off the money to offset our operating budget they could do it and do some offset of the capital budget. Um, they can, the town can do what it wants with the money as long as it's for the library. So they, they're funding us. It's, I've never known it to be different. They always take the money and just say, okay, well, you don't need that from us. We'll, um, we're going to take the, the tax revenue and apply it to your budget. I mean, the, uh, not tax revenue, the, um, Trust revenue. Fund revenue. Yeah. yeah. The, years ago, they they did have an issue with the bank that the, the bank was claiming that the town could not use the amount of interest that we were that we now get. Um, and it had something to do with saving for future generations. That there, I think there's a certain, you know, you have to be fiscally responsible with it. Um, 
but it, we used to get much, much less. And then they renegotiated that with the banks and we started getting a decent amount. Okay. Thanks. So these funds are not the same trust funds that we see on the spreadsheet every month. That right. we get. This is a separate group of trust funds that was established some, uh, for the town right. to use for the operating budget. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, is there anything else you wanted to, any other comment on the budget stuff? Um, actually, Catherine, you want to just give us a, uh, what you think might be the schedule here on the process, on the budget process? Um, that's coming up. Yeah. Do you have any idea when you're going to, you'll be in front of the town yes. council? Okay. Yeah. So on the, on the 14th, Valentine's Day, um, that's a Monday night. That's when we present to the town council. And the following Thursday is the 17th, and that's when we present to the FinCom. What was the date on the FinCom? The 17th. So 2.14 and 2.17? Okay. Right. Okay. And then the capital budget, all of that is still pending. Um, we heard from town hall to DPW today um, that they're evaluating it. Um, I think they're gonna send somebody over to look at the roof. Okay. So I haven't heard much more about that, but they, the, the lines of communication are a little bit open now anyway. So I don't know what the schedule is with that, but that will go to the capital planning committee at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, buildings and grounds. Um, what I can report is that, um, I think it was on December 20th, uh, myself and Jeff, uh, and Catherine and uh, Dave uh, met and did a tour of the building. And um, we got, you know, got up on the roof. It was a pleasant day and we were able to get up on the roof and take a look at that and um, take a look at the mechanicals and discuss some of the issues of the longer term stuff. So um, what's in the capital budget you know, is, is the stuff that you've been seeing all along. Um, what we're going to do is put out some things in the outer years in order to kind of get those on people's radar. And that includes uh, big ticket items like um, redoing the front plaza. Um, that's separate from redoing the stairs, the steps that we already know we have a an issue with um, replacing some mechanical equipment that's not on the schedule right now, but will be coming of age. Um, fairly big ticket items. Um, and I think one we put out there is uh, uh, resurfacing and doing some drainage improvement on the parking lot and the driveway. So those, those are like just the highlights, uh, but uh, we, you know, how the building's in fairly good shape, but we just got to start preparing for stuff down the line. Um, you want to add anything to that, Jeff? No, no, it's it's um, right. Like, like you say, just reinforce the the stuff that was already on there, um, and um, just want to hammer the point that um, yeah, we we need to start socializing with with the town the these things that we expect to fail, like you say. So that um, when we go to put our hand out for the money, they can't be surprised, uh, like it's the first time they're hearing about it. So, um, so it was good in that regard. And then you know, with the boiler, it was great to to get in there and and, and see what was going on to kind of understand the redundancy situation better. So that was it. Was, for me, it was it was a really informative. Yeah. 
I would love to know how we have six boilers or why. How that worked. That would have been why? interesting. Why? Well, it's it's a very um, it's a very typical way for buildings to be heated now, particularly larger kind of commercial type buildings. So you do develop redundancy and it allows you to really modulate the boilers so you're not consuming a lot of gas or, or oil and depending on the situation. Um, you get to do it in much smaller increments and it saves a lot of energy over time. It's been pretty standard for the last say 20 years. This okay. has been has been going on in you know buildings like the library. Um, and um, so that's that's why the six boilers. Not one boiler couldn't, well, I shouldn't say that. Probably on a very cool day, one boiler could probably heat the building. But more than likely you're operating with two or three boilers. So it's more of like a zoning thing? No, the zone that's separate. This, this the zoning is separate because that's controlled by what pumps are, you know, what pumps, what zones are actually calling for heat. This more has to do with producing enough hot water in our case mm -hmm. to satisfy the, the needs of all the zones in the building. And you start out with one um, and you know another one might kick on and a third might kick on depending on the need of the day. And the, you know, a lot of it has to do with outdoor temperature and like all it right, doesn't turn out. All right, thank you. Yep. Uh, just in the spirit of preparedness, uh, Tim, Jeff, Catherine, uh, you noticed some big ticket items. Um, any any guess conservatively on, on how, how far out some of those things are, or, or I guess how close they are to being in need of repair or replacement? Um. The big ticket items, the bigger ticket items are probably out anywhere from four to 10 years. Okay. Um, there's some smaller stuff that might pop up. Like I would like, I personally, I think we should replace that boiler that's, that's not working. So that might be a little more immediate in the next couple of years. Um, but I'd like to get us to get funding for the capital items that we've been requesting because stuff gets pushed along and at some point, you know, we don't want to do that. But um, the stuff that's on the the uh, schedule for this year coming up, if we get that funded, we can do that. And then probably next year, hopefully get a boiler. Uh, but there's no other urgent need the except the. Um, what about the, the roof? roof? Yeah, the roof, the front, the front roof. I'll refer to it as the front roof and the rear roof. Um, the front roof is older than the rear roof. So we're looking to get funding pretty soon um, to redo that front roof. And then probably another, we'll probably be able to maintain the rear roof probably for another five or six years. And then we're going to probably have to replace that. So that was the, the exercise that would, that Jeff and I did is, is to um, kind of start re looking at those things. We've kind of, you know, we're getting to the age where, you know, we don't want people to keep saying, well, the bre the library is brand new, you know, because you guys renovated it. Well, it, you know, that renovation is now come of age and equipment and components of the building start to wear out. So, but there's a tendency for people to think that the, you know, the because we did the renovation, how many years ago, Catherine? Like 25, six? Uh, yeah, it was 98. Yeah, so in 1998. So we're now at, you know, we're all, we're approaching 24 years on that. So, uh, but everybody would still, I think in general, people think we just did it recently, you know? Um, and I think it's just a good, I, I think it's a good idea to start educating people that, you know, things are, you know, things do wear out. 
So the, the thing that complicates it is that, for instance, our request for next year is four hundred and twenty one thousand um, yep. dollars because because the roof is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of that. Um, so the town only has about two million for capital needs. And that's the, the one of the meetings that I went to, I wanted carpet and I'm there to you know, present that I want carpet. And the group before me was the fire department. And at the end of his speech, he said, you know, he talks about what the fire department needs. And he said, oh, and by the way, um, I just want to put in a word for sprinkler systems at the Doyle because the Doyle didn't have sprinkler systems. So I'm following with carpet sprinkler systems for toddlers. I, you right. know, I, tough act to follow. Yeah, tough act, <laughs> tough to, follow. act to follow. <laughs> um, so there are a lot of other needs in town and you want to, you know, that's what the capital planning um, board that's what they do they weigh it but they've known about the every year we go in and we say sooner or later we're coming in with this roof so they kind of know that that ha has happened but the pandemic year is not being funded that kind of set us back because we got funding for the carpet and then we lost it so that's you know now it was something that was forty thousand dollars it's now fifty thousand dollars and we've got other th bigger fish that we need. So um, it adds up. Mm -hmm. Funds, fund capital. Okay. Um, so is that enough on buildings and grounds? Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, friends, uh, anybody reporting on friends? Did, did I, I go, Jackie, or did you? I no, I went. I think I went. <laughs> it, was so it feels like a long time ago. <laughs> I don't even remember what happened. But I, I do know that they had scheduled a book sale pick up, a drop off if you want to, if you have books to donate. Um, they were going to do that this month and it's been put off. The town asked them to put it off. I think it has something to do with the pandemic. Um, they they so, funded our request, Catherine. That was I oh, went. That oh, that's what it was. <laughs> How could we forget? Um, and they they took a picture, and I wasn't there. They took a picture on Saturday, um, and Karen Stern from um, Adult Services and Casey from Youth Services were there to have their picture taken with um, the Friends President. So they gave us fifteen thousand um, dollars. Um, and that's all, that's all programming. So that was good. Yeah, they seem to be doing well. Great. Okay. Um, legislative advocacy. Um, oh, gift funds comes before that. Oh, I apologize. I skipped gift funds. Yep. And I only have one thing to say about gift funds and I, I'm not happy to say it, but I'm gonna need Susan and Scott and Tim to come in for Fidelity. Um, when I found out about this, Susan was on vacation. So I, I left a note. And so we're not getting to it till now. The paperwork that we submitted th that they told me to submit, I, this was sent back to me. It's not the right paper because mm -hmm. we're not whatever business that paper is for. So they sent me a new form which is not online, that it was not a form that was a choice. Um, so that form requires Tim's signature to be notarized. Mm. Um, so you don't all have to come in together, but you just have to come in and sign it. No worries. So whenever, okay. it's, it's ready when to go. Once it's ready for signature. It, it's ready now. So whenever you want to come in is fine. I, ideally before, by, by the time, we meet again in February, it'll, it'll be signed, so. Okay. Catherine, can I ask a question about the gift funds? Yes. Um, so I'm looking, I see $375,000 roughly in unrestricted, right? Gifts, um, um, maybe. unrestricted yeah. gifts. Yeah. I'm reading this, right? Yeah. Would we ever consider, let's just say the town puts us off on the capital budget 
again, we don't get our carpet. Would we ever consider using some of those funds for some, um, I'm not saying like for a roof, obviously that's a pretty large capital project, but something like the rugs that we may, like you brought up, we may have trouble getting through a town capital process. Right. Um, so the, the, the one thing is that we can only spend the income. So where there's $374,000, there's only 21,000 in income. So that's all we can use of that. Um, so we probably could, it, it, if it got to the point that we desperately needed carpet and, we, and the town could not fund it, um, that, that could be something that you could look at, the, the, the other resources. Um, I don't know, I think it's, there are a lot, that, that Jackie and I were talking about this today. There are a lot of things that we pay for um, that don't really show up in the budget that we're paying for with gifts and we get a lot of gifts. Um, we have, we, it looks like we have a lot of resources and there are no line items in, in the operating budget for any programming at all. Um, so the supplies that the youth room needs, you know, to, there's 3000 school children in town. And if they wanna do a BB con or something, all of that has to come from someplace other than a budget. Um, and then the gift, a lot of the gift funds, um, it, they're for books. So you can only, you know, that's only for books. And we have had that money accumulate and then had to use them for books in really difficult circumstances when the town was really um, in, in a bad place with a bad economy. So it can be done, but it's something that I think we'd want to think about carefully, um, because there's going to be there's going to be a sacrifice somewhere. It may be that it's the best option. Um, Do you keep track of um, the funds that you spend that aren't on the budget? That, yeah. Oh yes. Oh yeah. We keep we. I have. Yeah. In fact, so the town uses Munis for their accounting and they will that will give you a single number. We put everything into QuickBooks so that I know, you know, if, if friends donated something, I know where all of that went. Um, not just that it was a program, but what the program was, what parts were, um, you know, services or, or supplies or whatever. Yeah, all of that is tracked. Is it just me because I just don't, I, do you normally put that in the packet? No. No. Okay. No, I don't put because it's it's so many pages. I gotcha. Um, but if I guess, was, yeah, if we were if we were going to talk about it, if it was something that needed to be discussed, and that's what we were going to be looking at, then I could I could give everybody that information. But you wouldn't necessarily oh. want it month to month. Yeah, I was just thinking it maybe it would be something to go because if you could go and say historically, this is how much stuff that we spend outside of our budget maintaining right. X, Y, and Z right. um, for like certain budgeting items or things like that. You know, like uh, I think it was Adam, you brought up using, you know, stuff for the carpet, be like, hey, we, we've purchased all these other things on our own, you know, as something to say to the town. Right. Um, if, if, you know, something came up where we really wanted to make that argument and say, hey, this is kind of necessary and, and this is what we have, you know, outside of what we've asked for, this is what we've done to, you know, maintain and provide services, programs, you know, things at the library, so. Right. We, we also get state aid every year. There's no guarantee that we'll get that every year, but we do get it. And um, at one point, the town did suggest that we use state aid for the, for the carpeting. Um, and, and I hesitated to do that. And I asked other directors about it. And almost to a single director, they do the same thing. They, they hoard that money for a couple of years because it's, um, it's, a, it's what they call prudent reserve. If something happens mid-year, 
and you lose funding, you can lose certification because you don't have time to make it up. So if you have state aid in your pocket and all of a sudden part of your budget is cut, that state aid can help you get through the year. And that did happen to us once before in 2008, 2009. Um, the other thing about state aid is that right now, state aid that we have is about the equivalent of what we've lost from Blossoms. And, um, you know, that's a, that's a hit. That's money that we had um, that we've never counted on because we didn't, you know, we didn't always know we were going to have it. But that gave us Plaza Jazz. Plaza Jazz is $10,000 a summer. That is not a small thing um, and if and depending on why you're doing it I think it's worth the ten thousand dollars because it's so unique and it brings people downtown it's worth every penny so so it's you know yeah so that's kind of why we do it um, but you have to have the funding for that there's no line item where would I get that from you know so that has to come from um, I know I can have, and you have to plan Plaza Jazz almost a year in advance. So I know I can do it because I have state aid, even though, you know, I just found out we're not going to have a Blossoms and that Blossoms money is gone. So, um, and we do have a lot of gifts that we get, but the gifts almost always come with a restriction. So we have to be careful of those restrictions too. And you just want to use the interest, you know, typically you don't want to waste it. You want to do what you can. So on the plus side, I will say that we have a stout fund that was um, dedicated to technology. There's $9,000 in that. And we have recently found that our technology spending is decreasing a bit that people are not using computers the way that they were, they're using devices instead, and that's saving us a little bit of money. So as things change, we might wanna look at what kinds of funds we have and what we wanna do with it. Um, and you may wanna talk about whether or not carpet becomes such a necessity that it should be something that, you know, maybe we share the price, maybe, you know, part of it comes from us and part of it comes from the town. I don't know, but um, it is a capital item and it is, it is a basic, um, it's a basic expense. Yeah, Jeff, right? It is, it's a, it's a, it's a expensive. Yeah, I think things would have to be pretty bad to go down that road. I, you know, it's, it's once you set that precedent, you're, you're, you're on the hook for it going forward as well. So, I mean, it, ne never say never, but um, um, never. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but pretty close. <laughs> yeah, things would have to be pretty bad. So did that kind of explain it? Yes, ma'am, thanks. Okay. All right, um, legislative advocacy now. So anybody want to re report anything new? Um, and there was some uh, in our package, there was some some information about the whole ebook legislation. Um, I don't know if people saw that, but um, that's something yeah. that potentially could be important to us. But there's nothing new on that now. And I, I don't know, Jeff, you haven't heard anything about um, anything in the legislature or anything. I don't think there's anything happening right now. No, I, I, I don't think so. And, you know, it, it's, it's unfortunate that, that New York didn't, didn't uh, pass that, but, you know, they're the, the beating heart of the, uh, the old publishing industry. So it's not entirely surprising that, uh, that it didn't get passed there. Oh, good point. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so we have, we don't have specifically on the agenda, um, uh, Catherine's evaluation as an item, but uh, do we, we want to handle it here with personnel? Is that okay? I so. Yeah, uh, I think okay. so. 
So, I mean, basically, I just want to review the schedule uh, for this, and and we do have to have a personnel committee meeting, um, and we probably have to do that fairly soon. So, if we want to report back for the February meeting, so um, the um, the four members of this committee, we have to, I mean. I might have messed this up because I think I might have been said we'd get a meeting posted and and we didn't. So um, tomorrow I could do that if um, I'll send out an email to the other members and see of about availability. Um, but so we have to meet. Did everybody get the information on the evaluation? Yeah. Okay. So we have to meet, I encourage everybody to do their evaluations and the personnel committee will then collect them. So after we meet, um, then we're probably gonna have to meet again to collate those, that information. Um, so we'll be able to uh, present it for, um, we'll be able to do the formal evaluation for the March meeting. Um, so is that agreeable to people? I'll reach out to the other three members and then we'll, we'll, um, uh, <clears throat> we'll have a meeting ASAP. It's gotta be posted. Yeah. Um, okay. Is any feeling, uh, th do you want to do it as a zoom meeting or do you want to do it as an in-person meeting? In person. Yeah. I'd rather do it in person. person. All right, so, I'm fine in person. All right, great. So, Catherine, I, I'll call you to, we'll, or to see if we can just reserve the trustees room. Yeah. Not, there's not much going on in that room, right? No, there's, there's nobody there. So, okay. It's very, it's rarely, but there's someone, but not very often. So that's, that's perfect. Or you can use the um, lecture hall too. Okay. Um, so can I reach out to you guys in the morning with an email and we can just pick some time? I'll throw out some times and you can give me your A. Sure, okay, please. you need what, 72 hour notice, Catherine? 70. Um, Sherry needs 72 hours notice, 72 yes. Hours. Okay. So hopefully sometime next week, does anybody away next week? Okay, I'll send out an email in the morning. You know what? You better check with Sherry that it's all right to have an in-person meeting. I, I think it. I think it is, but I'm not positive. I'd rather, <coughs> excuse me. I'd rather ask forgiveness than permission. You're being recorded, <laughs> so you've already done it. <laughs> I know. I well, you just have to be able to. You, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, it's a different, it's a committee. So I think it doesn't matter. Yeah. <clears throat> I think you're all right. We can socially distance. Yes. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> this is, uh, my cough is not indicative of uh, anything. Same uh, as the meeting. <laughs> While <laughs> asking for an in-person meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I know, bad timing on the cough. Um, tuition, uh, we have new business. We have a tuition reimbursement. So we have to approve um, actually the payment for, for this. <coughs> Is it a motion uh, to right, approve? Hi, right, Catherine. Yes, you had already approved it and okay. she has, um, she's passed the course with flying colors. So you just uh, uh, approve payment. All right, I'll make so, a motion to approve reimbursement for her. That's awesome. Second. Chris second it. Okay. Um, any discussion on the reimbursement? No, I just think it's great that she's Thanks. doing it. Seeing none, we'll have a vote. Uh, Paul? Aye. Um, Amy? Aye. Chris? Aye. Susan. Aye. 
Adam. Aye. Scott. Aye. Jeff. Aye. And I'm an aye. It passes for reimbursement. Okay, congratulations. Um, so the only other thing is items not reasonably uh, anticipated by the chair. Um, I had uh, just one thing that uh, actually, Catherine, you sent it to me, but I don't think you sent it to other people about the uh, Education Foundation trivia night. Oh, yeah. So I, I can let you all know, uh, Catherine sent me this and I'm not actually going to be around, but I also have no interest. Uh, but Education Foundation is having a trivia night and they're soliciting us if we wanted to put a, a team in of four. So if anybody has any interest in organizing a team, I think it's being held on the 5th of February, if I remember right. You can go for it. Scholarship Foundation one, is it? Yeah. It's Education Foundation money, yeah. Chip it's Foundation or, or WEF? Pardon me? Is it the Scholarship Foundation or WEF? The Scholarship, scholarship Foundation is the one. Scholarship, scholarship foundation. foundation. It's the Scholarship Foundation. So anyway, I just thought I'd let you know. Um, it's kind of short notice, but if anybody has any interest in, in it, um, and I think that was all I, uh, that was all I had on my notes. Anybody got anything else? Can I just, just to go back to the, um, director evaluation, the forms that were sent out. So, or yeah, given out. So now we all have two weeks to fill that out. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. We should, uh, really encourage you to get them done in the next two weeks. Uh, so what will happen is the, the personnel committee will collect them and then we collate the evaluations and come up with a one evaluation based on all the input. And so then, we're going to meet once next week before we get those back and then meet again after right. we get them back. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I think we got to. No, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing a step somewhere or if I had to do that earlier than two weeks. Do they need to be like handwritten, dropped off at the library or how are we collecting that now that we're not in person? Well, why don't we, once once we get a, once we vote a chairman. We're meeting on that. All we'll, right. We'll vote a chair and then the chair can collect them. Okay. I have All a right. question. Were we sent that form in this packet? No. Yeah. It so, it's in a, it separate, a separate, email, I think. it was a separate attachment. It wasn't in the package. It wasn't in the package. It was a, we, no, a week ago, maybe? Yeah, yeah. It's an email from Catherine. Um, the attachment is called 2021 eval statement, I think. Yeah, yeah. It is separate from Sherry's packet. It, it was in a previous packet, but it was a PDF. So I sent it this time as a Word document. But I'll send it again. Okay. And then, and then um, but it's a Word document. So you can fill it out any way you want. So I missed December because I was in Seattle. And then I think... I think I got stuff when I was in Philadelphia and I, that, I think I missed that. Okay. So Maybe you travel too much, Susan. I know, really, like it's just- Not calling the kettle black. I eh? know, yeah. who's <laughs> saying that? That's <laughs> the holiday travel agent. <laughs> yeah. Nobody travels more than you or Suzanne. It's a toss up. I'm here next week for a meeting, so. <laughs> just don't get me sick and ruin my February vacation. Okay. So right, Kathy, can else, you folks? send that to me? Yes, I'll send it to everybody. All right, thank you. It's better to have more than you Thank you very much. Yeah, you can send both attachments, Catherine. Yeah. For Susan. Yeah. Okay. All right, any other questions or comments? All right, uh, as I'll probably end every meeting, uh, is there any word on in-person meetings, Catherine? <laughs> no, March. I haven't heard. I haven't heard anything. Town review mid-March, or is that just masks? Mask review. The indoor mask review is going to be evaluated at um, Board of Health March meeting. 
Which March. Is, yeah, that well, also include me. Mask mandate. I mean, that's what affected Blossoms, that and just the uncertainty that the committee felt we just didn't know if it was going to ever, you know, happen that two, even 200 people could be in the library at the same time. And I think. Well, um, then we already did masquerade, so it was kind of hard to plan another masquerade. We can always do it again. <laughs> Yeah. The last two years have been so long, people will never remember what we did before that. So unfortunately, yeah. we canceled it, but I'm well, still- I think the only thing I think is really unfortunate is that it would have been a nice um, event for the centennial. Except so it can the, be, yeah. the, the building opened in 2023. Well, they broke. Up. They broke ground in twenty in in nineteen twenty two, oh, nice. but it it opened in nineteen twenty three. Oh, okay, oh, that's, that's good. All right, so our spirit was broken into twenty twenty two, and we're gonna be reawakened in twenty twenty three. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah. Because if no, ever, did anything happen in in nineteen twenty four? Yeah. <laughs> Do we have a back? That's yeah. actually good news, yeah, it's, I, not I, it's, been, oh, it's been the 50th anniversary of Disney World for like 20 years now. So, you know, you can just keep going, right? Hey. Nobody keeps track. <laughs> right. So many people are trying to backtrack. They're like, wait, 50 years? What What was that? I'm like, don't don't think too much about the details. Just yeah. happy to be at Disney. Well, maybe in 2023, it will, it will be a major celebration, even if there's only us there. <laughs> uh, we can hope. Okay, well. I just thought I'd bring it up. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, folks, um, I'll attend to entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor, Paul? Aye. Uh, Amy? Aye, who made the motion first, just for the record? Uh, oh, oh, actually, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, Tim, I thought you did. I'll, I'll I make, the make the motion. Right. Entertained. So moved, I guess. But... Wait, who, who made right. it? So Scott, made, Scott made the motion. Chris seconded it. I'm retroactively right. making the motion. Yeah. Motion. Okay. It just All right, I'll back up. you, Amy, because you have to take the notes. That was unfair. <laughs> and in case I didn't get it, I said hi. So. In person meetings, this isn't an issue. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Paul, I'll start over again. Paul? Aye. All right. Uh, Amy? Aye. Chris? Aye. Susan? Aye. Adam? Aye. Scott? Aye. Jeff? Aye. And I'm an aye. All right, folks. Signing off. Have a good night. <laughs>